Oh, well, 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 who do we have got right in front of us? Okay, it's the Sukhoi Superjet 100. A plane that, you know, if you might not know, I've had a bit of a, you know, love-hate relationship before. And when I say love-hate relationship, I mean pretty much hate relationship. I do kind of have a slight incline to dislike this plane. Let me just put it that way, okay? In other words, I'm, I'm not, I hate this, okay? Now, this is not really what we think about when we think about Russian planes, right? You know, we more think about the Tupolev Tu-154 or the O-76 or planes like those. Not really such a modern Airbus A220 looking jet right here, you know? I mean, the Sukhoi Superjet on first glance seems to be a very nice plane, right? Came out in 2008 uh, and it's uh, been flying around since then, indeed. You know, it's mostly used by airlines like Aeroflot, of course, the Russian airline, Jamal Airlines, whoever that is, and some, yeah, other um, Russian airlines, actually, mostly Russian airlines. Yeah, this is an interesting regional jet. That is, by the way, very, very cheap, which is basically the main point of this jet, too. Uh, the price for this one, at least in 2012, was only $31 million, which is really not much for a jet at all. I mean, comparing this to something like a, I don't know, like an A220 or something, that'll cost you a nice hundred million. You could basically buy two or three Sukhoi Super Jets for the price of an A220. So really, this is a quite cheap jet to fly. And it does look nice from the cockpit. You know, I'm just, this is really interesting. But the safety record for a modern plane like this, this is not good, by the way. I mean, it's got four crashes and one very interesting one, of course, in 2019, where apparently a lightning struck the damn aircraft and lit it on fire. I'm still not quite sure about this accident, but that's a whole other story. See, I'm not quite sure about the safety of this plane. I mean, I've been a lot harsher uh, on this plane in the past, but uh, honestly, would I fly it in real life? Probably, yes. I mean, accidents happen all the time. Okay, they shouldn't actually happen, especially fatal ones, but this plane actually now does appear to be somewhat fine safety-wise to me. Even though, again, four crashes within like 10 years for a plane that only flies around pretty much five days times a year because it's not really widely used. It's quite a bit of a sad number, honestly. But let's just go ahead and see if I actually can like this plane by testing its performance a little more. See, something we have really not tried out with this plane yet, and especially we haven't tested out the runway performance. See, where Russian planes are always known for not using that much of a long runway, especially planes like the Il-76, which by the way is the most dangerous plane on this planet, probably because of where it flies. It's a military aircraft. Um, but let's just go ahead and really take off. This is a 600 meter long runway, which is already, this is a bad idea, isn't it? Yeah, for a plane like this, this is not gonna work out, really. <laughs> I mean, it may, let's test it out later. For example, here again in the south of France at Le Mole Airport. Now this is actually a typical place that I like to fly airliners like this to because it has a 1200 meter long runway, which is normally pretty much the most this kind of plane can do, or at least the shortest this kind of plane can do. The official numbers are not really that good. At maximum landing weight, this plane needs 1600 meters of runway, which doesn't sound good. I mean, even the 737 Max uses less than that. Oh, uh oh. I may, you know, stick to that incline that I have about disliking this plane. But no, really, this is, of course, at maximum weight. We're gonna now fly this plane at the lowest possible weight, pretty much, okay? 25,000 kilos, which is not that much. So, I'm I'm just gonna check this out. I mean, this plane could theoretically still transport a hundred people. So, let's just try to do this landing right here. Now, what I can do, at least here in the flight simulator, is actually put out reverse thrust mid-flight, which is a nice feature. Probably doesn't exist in real life. Honestly, I, I hope not. <laughs> but I mean, it, it would make this plane really savage, right? The, I mean, the only jet plane that I really know that can do this is probably the C-17. Plane that's known for being able to fall out of the sky. So again, because of its ability to put out the reverse thrust in mid-flight. But let's just come in for a bit of a <clears throat> landing here. See, this plane actually does fly nicely at slower speeds too. Great control. Let's go ahead and now get this plane landed. Okay, that's been a relatively good landing. Let's see how fast we can get this stopped. Just so you know that we have a little bit of a taste. Oh, we can be crapping in the background. Yeah, a bit of a taste of what we're going to be expecting here with our runway performance. And that's actually been quite a good landing. I mean, I'm probably being a little bit too harsh here on this plane, right? I mean, look at this beautiful landing here. We did use, like, at least half of this 1,200 meter long runway. So, should we be worried? Maybe. Hmm. I mean, let's step down the game, or step up the game, pretty much, with a thousand meter long runway. Let's see how that's gonna work. Okay, now, Borkum, I've flown to this island in real life, with a Cirrus. 
which is a bit smaller than the Sukhoi Super Jet, maybe, but this is another story. Let's just try to come in for a landing, really. This will be highly professional. I mean, uh, what I'm really not quite sure of is uh, the, uh, let me just say, fuel consumption of this airplane. I mean, look at those wings. Where's the winglets? I mean, this uh, wing here is not even, like, specially shaped at all. This looks like a wing from, like, the 60s or something. Great fuel food consumption, probably. All right. But what this plane can do actually quite well, at least here in the flight simulator, maybe it's a realistic model. Indeed, it's actually fly at very slow speeds. We're at 110 knots, and this actually does work. I don't want to actually, you know, get into a turn or anything, because I don't mean death most probably. But let's just come in for a bit of a landing indeed and see how this is going to work. All right, now a landing. Let's see if this is going to go. Okay, bit of a hard landing. I put out reverse thrust mid-flight. Let's go ahead and stop. See how this is going to really work. This could become a bit of a challenge indeed. And wh Why the hell isn't it stop? Why aren't you stopping? Come on, stop. Oh, damn. Is something wrong with my brakes? I mean, what could be is that the brakes are still a bit hot from our landing here in, in France because we just completely used this whole runway, didn't we? Look at that. This uh, this was uh, very, very close to death. That was not good. What the hell? The thing is, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I have flown this plane before in a live stream where it, I ran this plane out of fuel. I didn't properly fill up the plane and it, it ran out of fuel mid-flight. But this is just great. I'm, I'm just going to hope that um, this is somewhat going to work, right? Yeah, this is no problem. All right. Now. Okay, so it's time for the ultimate challenge. 300 meter long runway at Saba Airport. Okay, now. Put the landing gear down. The thing is now, with the nose landing gear down, this... It'll be a bit of a harder challenge, probably. All right, auto brakes to the max, cool and on. I mean, I'm really gonna try to fly this plane as slowly as possible now. Maybe let's try like 110 knots, which is probably a very bad idea. We'll come back to Swiss Air One. We always have bad ideas. Very careful here. Uh oh. We did kind of crash into this cliff, didn't we? See, you really don't want to go too slow either, of course. Okay, like 120 knots is probably perfectly fine here. Or actually, pretty much just at the edge. It's coming for a nice and easy landing. Come on, let's not crash. Don't die on me again. Okay, good. No cliff, please. Okay, hard landing coming up. Okay, that's been a very hard... We, we may have just probably broken our landing gear with this landing, but let's see if we can stop too. Which we, uh... Yeah, no. I mean, yeah, this plane is quite crazy. You have to say that. We have been able to land this at some very interesting places, right? But 500 meters probably is the maximum what this plane could do. But yeah, this is quite a crazy Russian plane. So do I approve of it? <sighs> yeah, but safety concern-wise, not quite sure. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, good night. Now, thank you to my members here on YouTube, like Block, Emite, Mubarak, Mike, Ethan, Darren, Stefan, Ian, Oman the Human, Rafael Brokowski, Junk in the Trunk, Moritz, uh, Toby, Greg Grandpa John, Garman Pasta, Calamity Airlines, Kelly Chaos, New York, uh, Tyler Park, Chista Ritos, Shadow, Anime Planes, Razor One, X Men Show, Laird, Deslama, Puturing, Kellen, Me by You, Captain Cameron, Spiro, uh, Gary, Norwegian, Bajel, and Paralji.